Today's theme is about returning to God's path and being grounded in the truth. The scriptures remind us that God is calling His people back to His ways, warning us against the dangers of worldly deceptions and false teachings. In the Old Testament, we see the people of Judah drifting away from God's instructions, and He beckons them to stand at the crossroads and choose the ancient path of righteousness. In the New Testament, we are reminded not to be led astray by deceptive philosophies, but to remain rooted in the fullness of Christ. This message is a call to all of us to evaluate where we stand in our spiritual journey and to ask ourselves if we are following God's eternal truth or being swayed by the world's temptations. Let's begin this day by aligning our hearts with God's will and seeking His guidance. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with open hearts, seeking your wisdom and guidance. Help us, Lord, to choose your path, the ancient and eternal way that leads to life. Give us discernment to recognize falsehoods and the strength to remain steadfast in your truth. We ask that you speak to us through your word today, transforming our minds and aligning our lives with your perfect will. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It is a blessing to come together and meditate on the living word of God. Today's readings bring us powerful insights into the consequences of drifting away from God's path and the importance of staying rooted in Christ. Let us start with Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 to chapter 8 verse 7. Here, God is speaking to the people of Judah, calling them back to his ancient paths of righteousness. In Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16, the Lord says, Stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths, ask where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, We will not walk in it. This verse captures the heart of the message, God is offering rest and peace, but the people are stubbornly rejecting His ways. In chapter 7, God continues to warn the people through Jeremiah, urging them to amend their ways and actions. He pleads with them not to trust in deceptive words but to genuinely repent. In Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 5 to verse 7, he says, If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave your ancestors forever and ever. The people of Judah were trusting in their religious rituals, thinking that just by going to the temple they would be safe. But God was not interested in their outward acts, He wanted their hearts to change. In Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 23, He says, Obey me, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all I command you, that it may go well with you. Yet, despite God's constant warnings, they refused to listen. In chapter 8, we see the extent of their rebellion. Jeremiah laments over the people's refusal to return to God, even when disaster was looming. In Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 6, the Lord says, I have listened attentively, but they do not say what is right. None of them repent of their wickedness, saying, What have I done? Each pursues their own course like a horse charging into battle. This shows us the blindness of the human heart when it turns away from God. The people were so entrenched in their sin that they did not even recognize their need for repentance. Now, let us move to Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 to verse 23. The Apostle Paul warns the believers in Colossae about the dangers of being led astray by false teachings and human traditions. He begins by urging them in verse 8, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Paul's concern was that the church was being influenced by teachings that diminished the sufficiency of Christ. He reminds them that in Christ, they have been given fullness. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 and verse 10, Paul says, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. Paul explains that through Christ's death and resurrection, believers are set free from the legalistic demands of the law. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 14, he writes, He forgave us all our sins, 
having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Paul goes on to warn against returning to a life of rules and regulations that are based on human commands. He encourages the believers to hold fast to the freedom they have in Christ, not to be burdened again by rituals that have no power to bring true transformation. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 20, Paul says, Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules, do not handle. Do not taste. Do not touch. He is emphasizing that true spiritual life is not found in outward rules but in an inward relationship with Christ. This passage teaches us that we must be vigilant against anything that tries to take us away from the centrality of Christ in our lives. Next, we turn to Psalm chapter 78 verse 1 to verse 31. This psalm recounts the history of Israel's rebellion and God's faithfulness. It begins with a call to listen to God's teachings and to pass them on to the next generation. In verse 4, it says, We will not hide them from their descendants, we will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, His power, and the wonders He has done. This is a reminder that we have a responsibility to share God's works and His word with those who come after us. The psalmist also recalls how, despite God's mighty acts of deliverance, the people of Israel continued to rebel against Him. In Psalm chapter 78 verse 10 and verse 11, it says, They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by His law. They forgot what He had done, the wonders He had shown them. This passage reminds us of the importance of remembering God's faithfulness and keeping His commandments. Finally, we conclude with Proverbs chapter 24 verse 26, which says, An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. This verse highlights the value of honesty and integrity. Just as a kiss on the lips is an expression of affection and sincerity, so is an honest answer a reflection of true character. In summary, Today's readings remind us of the importance of choosing God's path and being grounded in the truth. From Jeremiah's call to return to the ancient paths, to Paul's warning against deceptive philosophies, to the psalmist's reflection on the consequences of rebellion, we see the vital importance of remaining faithful to God's word. Honesty, integrity, and obedience to God are key lessons for us to apply in our lives today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that guides us and leads us into all truth. Help us, Lord, to choose your path, to walk in obedience, and to remain rooted in Christ. We ask for discernment to recognize false teachings and the strength to stand firm in the freedom that Christ has given us. Let us not forget your mighty works and the love you have shown us. Help us to live lives of integrity, reflecting your truth in all we do. We pray for the strength to live out these lessons in our daily lives, that we may glorify you in all we do. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving, Amen and Amen. Thank you for being with us today. We pray that these devotions continue to bless and transform your life. Remember to stay connected with God's Word and tune in for more life-changing devotions on this channel. May God bless you abundantly for your support and we look forward to sharing more with you soon. Shalom.